And the Lord God commanded him, You may eat freely from every tree of the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. All right, welcome, welcome to uh, Legion of Michael. Welcome to the Legion of Michael podcast. I'm your host, Paul Markle. Thank you very much for joining me today. I appreciate the fact that all of you are out there. I hope you enjoyed last week's Sermon on War. The Sermon on War, we've been sharing that with our Student of the Gun audience for many years now, and I hope that you got something valuable from that. So the uh, I usually say the name of the book and uh, the chapter and verse uh, after I give my opening Bible quote. And if you don't know, and the Lord commanded him, ye may eat freely from the uh, from every tree in the garden, but not from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in that day you eat it, you will surely die. Uh, for those of you neophytes out there, that's from the book of Genesis, going all the way back to the beginning. Yeah, that's right. All the way back to the beginning. And uh, so welcome to Legion of Michael podcast. Thank you very much for being here. Remember, you can always go to legionofmichael.com. Go to legionofmichael.com, click on the Enroll Now button, and sign up for the Distance Learning Church Security Program. You want it. You know it. You should be in it. Uh, and uh, thank you for all of you who have signed up for that. And if you'd like to, sh- if you'd like to support the show... If you think that what you've received today has value, you can click the little hyperlink. Yes, the little hyperlink, and uh, you can go ahead and support the show. All right, why free will? Yes, the title is Free Will, not the song by Rush, which, funny, oddly enough, a lot of people think that that song is an anti religion and maybe it's an anti-religion song i don't know uh but it's certainly not an anti-god song it's not an anti-christian song because god gave us free will you see we are not little we're not puppets he created us in his image god said in the very begin beginning let us create man in our own image you know it's interesting to me that uh, that the Hebrews, that the Hebrews, they, they acknowledge in their, their Torah, they acknowledge the first five books of the modern Bible. And one of those is Genesis. And way at the very, 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 very beginning, it says, let us create man in our own image. That's the plural. That's the multiple. Let us create man in in our own image. Now, those of us who are Christians believe in a divine trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in God the Father, and we believe that he sent his Son, Jesus Christ, here to save us from our sins, to be the ultimate prophet and the ultimate sacrifice. We believe that. And it's interesting to me that the, that the Hebrews, who do not acknowledge uh, that Jesus Christ was the Son of God, and who do not, uh, as far as I know, they don't acknowledge Pentecost and the gift of the Holy Spirit. I don't know how they how they just skip right over that part from Moses, the uh, let us create man in our own image. But I digress. When it comes to free will, free will, God gave man free will from the beginning. You say, well, how does that passage from Genesis tell you that he gave man free will? Well, he gave him free will because if he didn't have free will, he would have removed that tree. I mean, God is God, right? He's the boss. He, he's the OG. Uh, and <laughs> he's the OG, G-O-D. And what he could have done is he said, well, we've, we've created man, and he's, he's a good little puppet. He's like our pet. He's like a good little pet down there. We'll put him on earth. 
Uh, but we don't want him to get in trouble. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove anything from the Garden of Eden that could potentially allow him to get in trouble. We don't want. We don't even want it to be there. We don't even want it to be there. Just take it away. And you say, why didn't he do that? Why didn't God just say, why did he allow the tree of knowledge of good and evil to even be there? I mean, he could have removed it. He could have said, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that out. And that way there won't be any temptation and you won't, uh, well, you won't be allowed. You won't be able. Well, because... We're not slaves. See, God didn't create us as his pets. He created us as his children. You see, when we raise our children, we're not raising slaves or we're not raising pets, are we? You're like, no, duh, no, of course not. And we understand that someday that our children, they're going to be out of our grasp that they're not going to be directly under our wing. We won't be able to control every decision that they make. We will not be able to control everything they do and see. Eventually, they're going to be out on their own. They're going to have free will. And our job as parents is to instruct them and to give them the best that we possibly can give them, to set the best example, to give them the best knowledge to educate them to the best of our abilities because they will have free will. I mean, they are going to have free will. At some point in time, they're going to be out there acting on their own and they're going to have to act without us there to hold their hands because they're our children. They're not our slaves. They're not our pets. They're not our servants. They're our children. And we are the children of God. He is our father. And he created us to be his children, not to be his pets or his slaves. Now you say, okay, Paul, duh, we all as Christians understand that. Do we really? You see, I'm a little bit fired up today. I'm a little bit fired up today. I'm a little bit fired up because I, uh, I've been, as many of you know, uh, I have a home in Wyoming. But uh, my my oldest son lives in Salt Lake City. Uh, he doesn't live in the city city, but a suburb of doesn't matter. He lives within the borders of the state of Utah, and we have been working uh, my two sons and I very diligently throughout the summer and now into the fall. I can't believe it's October already as I speak these words. But we've been working very diligently to create more material for you to create educational material, uh, to create both uh, distance learning training programs and in-person to improve and expand our in-person training programs. We've done uh, several classes. We did several classes this summer. Uh, We're creating a product that I think is going to be second to none, but that has me, instead of living in my beautiful home in Wyoming, That has me, and I've been living in Utah because we all need to be together to make this happen. You say, congratulations to you. Thank you very much for congratulating me. My point is this. I don't smoke cigars all the time, but occasionally, because I am a grown man, I do like to uh, engage in uh, the enjoyment of the hand-rolled premium tobacco cigar. And those of you who know, know, and those of you who don't think that I'm talking about Swisher Sweets or Philly Blunts or something like that, I'm not. Well, I didn't have very many cigars. I don't have very many cigars with me. And I thought, you know, I'll just go ahead uh, and I'll jump online with my buddies at Cigar.com and I'll order some and I'll have them shipped directly to me here and then I'll be good to go. No, I won't because Cigar.com flagged the address and said, sorry, We cannot ship to you in Utah. So I mentioned this to my son and my daughter-in-law, and they're like, oh, yeah, um, you're not allowed to receive tobacco in the mail. You cannot purchase, you cannot engage in the lawful commerce of purchasing a tobacco product and having it delivered to you within the state of Utah. And they said it's the same thing with wine, Uh, 
You cannot go on. You can't go to wine.com or wine aficionado or whatever and order wine uh, and have it delivered. You cannot engage in that lawful commerce because the state says you're not allowed. And I'm like, well, who said? And uh, now I'm going to go off of what I've been told. You see, I'm not a native of the state of Utah. But I know that the Mormons founded it. The Mormon church founded it. And uh, I'm assuming, I know what happens when you assume, you know, makes an ass out of you and me. I'm going to try not to make an ass out of you and me. But the information that I've been given, the information that has been given to me is that, no, uh, you cannot order tobacco to be delivered to your home. Now, you can purchase it. You can go to a store in the state and purchase it, but you can't have it delivered directly to your house. You can go to a state liquor store uh, or you can go to a grocery store and buy beer and wine, and that's okay. But you cannot engage in the lawful commerce of having it delivered to your home. And I was told that's because the Mormons do not approve of the consumption of wine. They believe it's a sin uh, or of tobacco or tobacco products. And that goes back, right back to the, uh, so God gave us free will from the very beginning. Book one, book numero uno is an example. There are obviously numerous examples of man being given free will and the demonstration of free will uh, in uh, in the Bible. But that that's probably one of the first ones. Uh, and yeah, somebody might you know, prove me wrong, but I think that's probably one of the first ones. It's probably one of the first examples of God saying, uh, this, this creature, this man who we have created after our own image is going to be our child. This is the child of God. These people that we're going to put on earth, these humans, these men are our children. They're not our slaves. They're not our pets. And as such, they have free will. Now you say, all right, get to the point. I'm going to get to the point right now. God gave us free will. And man seeks to take it away. You see, when man says, you're not allowed, you can't be a Christian and consume any tobacco product because you're not allowed because it's a sin. Who said it's a sin? Does it say so in the Bible? Well, it doesn't say in the Bible, but it says it somewhere else in a different book that we found. Oh, so the other book that you found supersedes the Bible? Is that how that works? They're like, yeah, because uh, the consumption of alcohol is a sin, and you're going to go to hell if you drink alcohol. Is that true? Hmm. Let's refer to the book. Yeah, let's refer to the book here. Uh, it's the, the, uh, you might have heard of the Gospel of John. I don't know. If you haven't heard of the Gospel of John, I'm gonna. It's in this th- little thing called the New Testament in the Holy Bible. And Jesus said to them, "Fill the water pots with water." So they filled them to the brim. And he said to them, "Draw some out and take it to the head waiter." And they took it to him. Now, when the head waiter tasted the water, which had become wine, and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water, knew. The head waiter called the groom and said to him, Every man serves the good wine first, but when the guests are drunk, then he serves the poorer wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of his signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. That is in the uh, Gospel of John that's found. Uh, and uh, now it's maybe in other places, but it's at that the one I just read you from the Gospel of John. That's miracle a numero uno. Miracle number one. Not 27, not 35, not 279, not 1,128. That was the first one. Now, if according to the various church elders, whether it's a Methodist church or a Baptist church or a Mormon church or you, you know, fill in the blank, who would say the consumption of alcohol is a sin, therefore it is forbidden. And you might poke up your little paw and say, yeah, but miracle number one 
was Christ turning water into wine. Do you believe that, or do you believe that the New Testament is a lie? Now, they would say to you, oh, well, the wine in the time of Galilee was like grape juice. You don't know anything about history. Thanks for playing. And he said, it wasn't just grape juice. When the head waiter tasted it, he went to the groom, and he's like, this is the good stuff. This isn't grape juice. This isn't Welch's. This is the good stuff. Now, if, based upon what we're told by these church elders, if we're told that wine is a sin, and I'm not going to get into tobacco right now, but let's say let's just stick with the wine thing. If that is true, why would not the Son of God, instead of turning water into wine for the guests at the wedding, why wouldn't instead he should have said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the original wine. I'm going to turn it into water. I'm going to take it away from you because you shouldn't have that. Matter of fact, I'm not even going to go to a wedding where they serve wine because that's a sin. You know, Christ consumed wine. (gasps) Yes. Yes. Back then, in the olden times, for those of you that, that missed out on the, the uh, I guess, I think it was episode, uh, it was an episode I did with James Jaeger. Uh, for those of you that don't remember, back in the olden days, wine was much more potent and much stronger than it is today. As a matter of fact, they had special bowls, they had special vessels that they used to mix the wine. In Proverbs, Solomon I believe it's Proverbs uh, 9. He said, wisdom has poured out her wine. She has mixed it. She has mixed her wine for you. What is mixing it? Well, they mix wine with water to cut it, to make it less potent, not more potent. For those who would say, oh, well, back in the time of Jesus, wine was just like grape juice. Wrong. Eh. Thanks for playing. You get to go back to, uh, I don't know, high school history. Of course, they probably don't teach that in history anymore, but I'm teaching you right now. You see, Christ didn't come down to earth and say, I am here to miracle away all the wine. Christ was all powerful. He controlled the weather. He controlled the ocean. The disciples said, who is this man that even the waves and the wind obey him? (laughs) <laughs> He's the son of God. <laughs> no, don't you love that one where Jesus is sleeping in the boat and they're all freaking out. And they're like, "We're good. don't you care? We're going to drown. And he's having a good nap. He was having a nice nap. And he stands up and he's like, oh, ye of little faith. And he says to the wind, be still. And boom, the wind is still. And they said, who is this man that even the wind obeys him? You see, if Christ would have come to earth... And he said, and he said, you know what? We can't we can't allow these men to be tempted by tobacco or wine or alcohol or anything else. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to miracle it all away so that it's not there. So that they, they, they can't even get it. They won't even have it. No, because that's not free will. That's not free will. When someone says to you that uh, not only should you not do that, but you shouldn't even be allowed to access it. You should not even be allowed to access wine. You should not even be allowed to access tobacco or fill in the blank because that's not God's way. You see, God's way is free will. God's way is I'm going to educate you. I'm going to give you the rules. I'm going to give you examples. I'm going to send the prophets to teach you, and then you can make good decisions. You see, if a person is educated, if a person is disciplined, if a person is raised properly, you could like set, put them in a room full of heroin, cocaine, every other horrible thing in the world. And they wouldn't engage in it because they would know they shouldn't. Because they would know it was bad for them. Because they have free will. They have, they have you know, God has given us free will. People say, how can God allow, fill in the blank. How could God allow 
this to happen or that to happen. If there's a God, how did he allow what? Fill in the blank. Hitler. How did he allow Hitler? How did he allow Stalin? How did he allow Mao? How did he allow that? He allowed it because he gave us free will, because he wants us to make good choices. And you can't make choices if there is no choice to make. You see, that's not free will. That's servitude. That's slavery. If your church elders say to you, or to anyone, if your church elders get in power and they're like, you know what, we're going to make it so no one's allowed to buy that. You're not even allowed to access it. There is no free will there. You then become a servant. If the government says to you, you're not even allowed to look at that, touch it, smell it, see it, because you might do something wrong. That's not free will. That's servitude. And that's not God's way. That's man's way. That is the way of man. What is commandment number one, kids? Like, uh, I don't know. I've heard of those before. I've heard of those ten commandments before. Number one, thou shall have no other gods before me. That means if you found another book other than the Bible, you're like, well, it doesn't say in the Bible that wine is a sin, and it doesn't say in the Bible that tobacco is a sin or fill in the blank, you know, chocolate or cocoa or uh, Diet Coke. I don't know. Uh, It doesn't say that in the Bible. We found a different book, and it says it in there. Oh. So do you want men to worship you, or do you want men to worship God? Are you putting yourself ahead of God or subservient to him? Are you removing men's free will or are you educating them? Are you being a good prophet and servant of God or are you trying to command others? God endorses free will. He gave us free will. We have the free will to believe and to accept his son, Jesus Christ, as our personal Savior. And as men here on earth, we have the free will not to. Now, he wants us all to, but because he loves us, he loves us so much that he's given us free will. He loves us so much that he's allowed us to make bad choices and mistakes. You see, slaves and servants and pets can't make bad choices because they're not allowed but we are so the next time you encounter someone in a church who says that they're a christian church and they say well you're not allowed like well i'm not allowed because god said i'm not allowed because christ said i'm not allowed or i'm not allowed because you said it just i just need some clarification Just need some clarification here. All right, ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, will you please join me in the warrior's prayer? Lord, I come before you seeking the strength and the skill to overcome my enemies. Grant me, I pray, the wisdom to recognize evil, the courage to confront it, and the strength to destroy it. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen.